We're out at the Nature Alive Adventure Center, which is basically our property out here. And I just arrived and uh, it snowed last night and there's a fresh trail on the ground here. And this trail that I'm going to show you right away happened in the last 15 minutes. Okay, let's switch the camera. This is my vehicle marks. I just drove here into the property and I went and parked at our cabin um, about 25 minutes ago. And then I got dressed up and I walked out here because I saw some fresh tracks and a trail further back behind me on the road that I wanted to travel or to track on. And then I came out here on my way to, on my way to that spot and this is what I found. So let's look here first, starting right here. So this is the animal coming this way. It's coming this way and it crossed over here right after I drove in. So this is a trail right here and heading up this way and half into the bush. This happened in the last 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, you can probably already guess what it is, but I'll give you some hints here in a second. But um, it's so fresh, it just happened. And I'm gonna see if I can get on it and maybe even catch a glimpse of this animal. It's likely so close that it's just down here and likely already aware of my presence. Uh, because it would have seen my truck drive in this way. And now it's down here in the woods. So let's take a quick look. All right. Now, as I step, I'm gonna sink down. We've got almost two feet of snow here. What do you think? One toe, two, three, four toes. Round compression mark. I don't see any claws present in the track and it's not super well defined uh, as far as toes go and heel pads, at least not in this track. And if we look at it, it's a walking gate, a walking gate. It's not a two by two lope. It's a walking gate for one footstep, two footstep. Now up here, there's a little bit of a better, a couple better tracks. So let's take a look. Yeah. The light is kind of flat today with all the snow, so it's not super clear, but one, two, three, four toes, round compression shape. There's the heel pad. There again. Yeah. And off it heads that way through the woods. Any guesses? What would you guess that this would be? Here's some other hints. If you look at, here's the weight of my foot when I push down beside the track. Watch this. Okay, that's how deep the snow is here. And this footprint here, this is a something that's staying right up on top of the snow. That's a hint. Look at the size of that track. Really large footprint for a small stride. Relatively small animal, but very oversized footprint. Very oversized footprint. What are you guessing? Well, it's not walking like a weasel at all. It doesn't have like a two by two or it doesn't have a, a, two, a three by four lope or any of those types of gates. Instead, it's got a diagonal walk going on here. So if you guessed Canada Lynx, you would be on the right track. And like I said, I think it's just over here. We're gonna go and I'll take you with me and we'll follow this and we'll see if we can catch a glimpse of this amazing boreal forest creature. Anytime that the trail changes or does something radical that I can interpret, I'll take some film. Uh, okay, here we go. There's the trail heading that way. I know that the 
in this area, it's deciduous forest right here, but as soon as we get to uh, the limit of the snow, as you can see in front of us, it drops off into a mixed wood spruce forest, and then it drops down into a bog with uh, tamarack and black spruce and uh, a lot of mossy forest with a lot of snowshoe hair in it. Here's the start of the trail. And as you can, you can see, it's a, it's a diagonal walk right here. So one, two, three, four, five. And it's just walking along here uh, on top of the snow. Uh, in the daylight hours, it's, it's right, right close to noon or lunchtime. And it just went through here. So let's just look a little closer at this trail. Right there, awesome. So this is a rear, rear print on top of a front print on the left side of the body. That's a rear print on top of a front print on the right side of the body. Front and rear, left side, front and rear, right side, and so on. So if we call this the left side here, actually from here you can see it maybe a little better. Now you can see these two prints are left side and left side, and that one's right side and right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line at the front of this footprint and a line at the front of this footprint. This gives us a rough shoulder to shoulder dimension of this cat. Okay, roughly. So they have a big, big butt. Okay, I'm going to see if I can zoom this out a bit. There we go. That's better. They have a, a really high butt, long back legs. So its bum is probably up about here. And this would be its back. And heading up right around here, somewhere here where my fist is, would be about the size and placement of its head. So think of that little animal like that on these tracks. Now there's forward movement, so it might be a, a bit smaller than what I'm tracing right here. But in any case, it gives you a rough idea of the animal size. Uh, here's another good clue as to the size of this animal. I wouldn't call this a big lynx. We know there's a mum and a cub around. But in any case, you can see here I'm under this spruce tree. So it walked quite cleanly under this spruce tree. So we know that it doesn't have any trouble going through a space this big. And it's heading in through here. And what I'm going to do is just look and see if I can find evidence of, uh, oh wow, evidence of some hair that may have fallen off in the animal. Look at this here. So there's a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we've got a, a larger front paw, or front foot, that's the front left, and a smaller rear, that's the rear or hind left, falling on top of the front right there. Awesome, so cool. And then it went up and it climbed up. Let's go in here. Okay, so it went up there and it actually slid down underneath and it went underneath this space. Can you believe that? Underneath there. I'm wondering if that's out of here. I don't see a hair there. And then it came up and went over this log and then leaped or leapt down and carried on that way. All right, well, I'm gonna just get my gloves back on because my hands are cold and carry on here. And uh, if I find some hair or other interesting little spots that it goes through, I'll stop and start the camera again. Here's one more little clue as to the size of this cat. So just looking right here, there's all these branches hanging down and it walked right through this little narrow window right here. So its back may have touched these, but you know, it's kind of a smaller cat. That's the last time I'll go on about the height and size of this animal. Anyways, but uh, we'll carry on now. I wish it wasn't so crunchy and loud. I 
I'd just love, love, love to get a, sh a view of this cat or even a photo or a video. Wouldn't that be something? But it's so noisy. Uh, the snow is really crunchy. So it came through. There's a footprint here and here. And it walked through this little spot right here. And it put its foot right there, left side foot, maybe both rear, front and rear. Not super sure. And then it uh, walked through under over to there. And then what it does is it turns a corner and heads through that kind of thick tangle there. So there's going to be lots of stuff like this that I'm going to have to sneak around and uh, get around. Oh, I hope there's a chase or something along those lines uh, of a snowshoe hare. Wouldn't that be exciting? So here in the thick woods now, the, the cat came here and it put one paw over there and might have looked that way to see if that was a way out and then decided, nope, I'm going to go this way and then passed here. Oh, hey, look at this. Isn't that curious? Oh, that's all been rubbed up and the bark is all shredded there. Uh, anyways, and then it went through. I'll have to go closer to see if it went under or hopped over. Let's see. I think it jumped right over. I think it hopped right up and over here. Oh, and there's a red squirrel track in there. And then the links went down and through. Oh gosh, what a tangle. Oh. It'd be hard to follow them here, but uh, yeah, onward we go. There's fresh snowshoe hair trails all through here too. So here's a, a front foot of a snowshoe hair, another front foot, and the two giant big rear feet as it's bounding this way. And there it landed there, and then the snowshoe hair went there, 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 and ran off. So there's... There's a snowshoe hare right in this area. And our lynx came out of that tangle. And then it crossed underneath the fence. And it's heading into the boggy forest there. So awesome. Not too surprising. We've seen many, many uh, trails and signs of lynx in here. And I have a video on our YouTube channel of the lynx coming out of the other end of this forest and chewing on uh, deer carcasses in night at nighttime. They visited it for a series of days, or evenings, I guess, in the dark, and you can see that video on our YouTube channel of uh, two lynx eating uh, meat off the bones. And uh, we'll get go this way now. So we're deeper in the coniferous forest now, and our lynx is here, here, here. Here, there, there, and right beside it, snowshoe hare. Front, front, rear, rear. Front, front, rear, rear. Front, front, rear, rear. So the lynx is walking right beside it, or maybe the snowshoe hare walked beside the lynx. I don't know if it happened at the same time. It doesn't look like a chase, but they just cross paths. Uh, there's two, here, let me flip it. There we go. There's two schools of thought as far as uh, trailing goes. One is that you should uh, backtrack. So when you find a fresh trail like this, rather than disturbing the animal, you follow the trail backwards. Uh, that's one, one method. The other method is to follow the trail forwards like I'm doing right now in hopes of getting to the animal. Uh, the one method is the reason is if you're doing research or you know you don't want to have too much influence or disrupt the animal's uh, daily routine then you go backwards on the back on the trail the other side of it is maybe you're a hunter maybe you're a wildlife photographer or maybe you're just really excited because you might get to see a lynx that lives on your property <laughs> like like I am and uh then you follow it forward in hopes of getting a glimpse of, of these beauties. Uh, so far, we've just caught them on cameras. The lynx did follow right on the trail of this snowshoe hare. Look at, so here it goes this way. He's going exactly where the snowshoe hare went, right on its trail. <laughs> right up here. Down 
through there. I'm gonna have to go around. Oh, okay, and then right here, the snowshoe hair trail goes off to the left. Lynx trail goes off to the right. <laughs> so maybe it was just smelling the snowshoe hair and following it, curious. But it didn't take chase anyways. Oh. Okay, it goes around there. It comes through this way. <laughs> I'm just trying to survive walking through here. It's hard to look up ahead and, you know, I may have already missed my chance to catch a glimpse of them. <laughs> Because I'm too busy trying not to take my eyes out on sticks here. Okay, well there's a snowshoe hare. I just saw it run. And if I zoom in there, you can see it. See that? Right there. That's its eye. Right there. It's hiding behind that tree. Thinks it's invisible from me. Hello, little buddy. I see you. Obviously you survived in the lynx. Missed his chance to eat you. <laughs> okay, let's see if I take a step towards it, I'll back out and I'll take a step towards it and we'll see what happens. Oh, he's moving. There he goes. <laughs> he's up on that snow pile back there, just sitting there. Huh? Okay, back to the lynx. Okay, so now he's leaving this little chunk of forest. And as you can see here, it's an opening. And he walked across here into that side. And it's even thicker on that side. <laughs> but I do have a trail camera way down over there. It would be cool if this trail ended up going that way and walking past the trail camera. At least we'd get to see a video of it. So I'm going to follow it at least that far. Um, unfortunately, I came out to work out here today and I have things I have to do. <laughs> so I can't spend my day tracking as much as I want to. But uh, we're going to carry on uh, for at least a little while yet. And then I got to get some work done. <sighs> no son of a gun. There's another snowshoe here. He's right there. <laughs> it, was, it was sitting right here just a second ago. As I walked up and all it did was turn and... Hey, what was that? Did you hear that? Is that a magpie or a blue jay? I'm wondering if that's a bird call because of a lynx. <laughs> what do you think, Mr. Rabbit? Do you think it's a lynx? Oh, what are you doing? Oh, that's funny. What the heck are you doing? I'm like 12 feet away from you. You're pretty, <laughs> you're pretty calm, aren't you, little one? Okay, I know as soon as I start walking, you're gonna blast off out of here, aren't you? Okay, but I hear bird alarms. All right. uh, I gotta keep going, because maybe that's a bird indicating the presence of the lynx. Whoa, look at this guy. I'm just gonna walk right by you. Boy, you're not scared at all. <laughs> okay, where's the trail? Now I gotta find the Lynx trail. Hey, hi buddy. How did you not get eaten? Huh? How did you, I wonder how close I can get to you. Well, maybe I shouldn't look a gift horse in the most. This is kind of an opportunity on its own. What are you doing there, little one? Can I get close to you? There's some interesting little tracks right there. Uh, did you just survive a chase? <laughs> hey, little guy. Holy crap. Now I'm about eight feet away from him. or Almost three meters away. Oh, there he goes. Okay. 
Okay, and the links came right through here. Oh, I gotta zoom out. Sorry. Ooh, my fingers are cold. There's Lynx track right there. It came right through here. Look at this. What's that? <laughs> and it went right through here. Ooh, maybe I'm right. Oh, look, he's still, <laughs> he's still there. There's his butt just over there. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, the trials of life. Uh, let's go see what that bird noise was all about. There's our trail again. Heading this way. Across this little opening. Look how deep the deer sink here in the snow. And then right beside it is the lynx right on top. And heading into here. Oh. Okay, I gotta set my camera down again here. Okay, the bird sound has stopped. Uh, oops, not only has the bird sound stopped, but the bird bird sound was back that way. And my lynx tracks go this way. I'm gonna try something a little oops, I'm gonna try something a little different. There's a sound that snowshoe hare make. Uh, it's like a death cry. And I've heard it a few times. I'm not gonna get into how or when or why, but uh, using that sound is a good way to attract predators like coyotes and perhaps lynx if they were to hear the death cry <laughs> of a snowshoe hare made by yours truly. Um, maybe I can, like if it's nearby, maybe I can, uh, get it to come towards me and I'll just sit quiet right here and see if I could get it to come out. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll try it. <laughs> Anyways. are alarming. Oh. <laughs> well, I attracted a bunch of birds. I've got gray jays and chickadees here. Oh, and there's a a dray. A dray is a above ground squirrel's nest. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right up in there. Maybe I'll go closer to it in a second. Anyways, let's see what happens. I'll just put the camera on standby. There's no point you sitting here waiting for in case nothing happens. I do hear some chickadees over in the direction of the camera making a bit of a ruckus. It could be the, well, it could be anything, but it could be the lynx coming towards my sound. <laughs> or not. I have uh, located weasels traveling through the forest by using those chickadees and nuthatches and red poles. And I've found weasels and stumbled across them. And house cats, those, that's a fun one. Uh, okay, I'll turn the camera off and check in in a bit. Okay, well, it's been a few minutes and the forest has gone quiet for probably almost 10 minutes after I made that uh, snowshoe hare death cry. There were birds. Uh, well, the birds reacted to me instantly, but there was uh, chickadees all straight ahead of me there, moving about, but now it's gone quiet. I wish I had more time. 
I'm going to pick up on my my first plan, which was to keep following these and see if they happen to go past our trail camera, and that way at least we'll get a glimpse on camera of this uh, smallish type lynx and go from there. Okay, so I've probably only walked about 60 meters or 60 yards or so, and here's the trail of the one I'm following, and it carries on that way. But now, cross trail of another one. Huh, is this the same size? Or did he just come and check me out? Boy, that looks like the same size. And now it's going that way. So either it it may have it may have just came and actually checked out that noise I made, or perhaps earlier in the last hour or so it just was moving about all through here. Sorry, here I'll open that a bit. So now my job is to follow and see if I can see if I can connect these two trails or see if just moments ago my little squelch or death cry actually brought him close to me. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. So it came in right to here and it checked out where a snowshoe hare was just sitting uh, just not that long ago and then it walked down this way. <sighs> I still haven't determined if it came back towards me or not, but we're getting closer to where our camera is. It's just over this way. Here's a spot where the, the, the lynx, this is a lynx track, lynx track, lynx track. Snowshoe hare was sitting right here and it pooped while it was eating. Look at that, you can see how it nibbles the bark right off. Just munch, 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 chew it right off. Looks like it nipped that one right off. And it just sat here pooping and eating. It took that one off too. Pooping and eating. Oh, and there's some older sign there. <laughs> when the snowshoe hair got to here, it stopped and messed about a bit. Look at here's a bit of a, a bit of a spinning paw. Right there. Another paw. paw. And then it looks to looks to me. Like, this is a hind foot, hind foot, and it was sitting right here on its haunches, and its front paws were in there, kind of digging about, trying to get at whatever, whatever it smelled or identified. It didn't spend too long here, though, and then it got bored and tootled off that way. Well, we just passed my trail camera. The trail's here, and it keeps going this way. Um, there we go. <laughs> My trail camera is just, just back right over there. But, uh, he didn't walk by the trail camera close enough to catch him. It's too bad. There was just a few trees between it and the trail camera, or he would have caught him. Um, earlier this week, that same trail camera right here captured mom and a cub or a kitten uh, at nighttime first and then at the daytime walking right through the area that I'm in right now It's likely that it is one of those same two cats that you'll see on the video camera. Um, in any case, how exciting is that? If you've never been able to trail an animal before, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of history and lore and, and relationship and association with humans and animals um, and legends of becoming the animal or getting adopting the mind of the animal or becoming animal-like. 
And I'm not going to get into all that, but I am going to say that uh, if you ever get the chance to follow an animal like this for an hour or two or three or four or even a day and follow it, it does kind of form a relationship between you and that animal. You feel as though you got something between you uh, and the tracks are are kind of the, the glue or the link that, that cements you and the relationship with that animal together. And now I've absorbed uh, a little bit of the life of that animal into me just by following it and seeing where it went and how it moved. And uh, you build stories like that. You build your filing cabinet uh, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as a, as a tracker and you get images and thoughts and then... Uh, a strong sense of intuition as to what you're looking at and how you're trailing and what animals you see, what you see in a track uh, starts to develop as well the more you do this. So pretty exciting. <laughs> I hope you, I didn't bore you to death and, and that you had a good time following along with me and uh, uh, at least felt some of my excitement. I hope that you also got some excitement too. Anyways, take care, keep tracking, and hopefully uh, we'll... We'll have a lot more videos and, and uh, not just on animal tracking, but on bushcraft and outdoors and canoeing and all the things that we do on our YouTube channels. So, uh, and if you get a chance, please drop us a line. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to build relationships with people too. And love to have people come out and visit our property. Oh, geez. I just found another hot trail that just happened recently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I going to get any work done today? Here, check this one out. This is another one. There we go. All right. I don't know how well you can see that, but basically a roughed grouse came in flying from somewhere over here. Whoa. And it landed. There's its front wings and there's its tail feathers. It came in for a landing. Woof. And then it hopped stepped hopped stepped whatever and then it started to tootle off and walk into here so maybe there's a grouse back in there that i could get close to and see and track and discover the life of and oh gosh i gotta go to work